I've got a good friend and buddy, Daniel, who's basically a video photographer and journalist. You were based in South America, and now you're here in Hua Hin. Correct. What, what Correct. brings you to Hua Hin? Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for having me here in this show. Uh, good question. What brought me here all the way in Hua Hin, mm. coming from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil? Uh, that's a long story. Well, I'm sure that's a long one. Uh, yeah. I'll keep it short for you. Yeah. No, I was contracted uh, 20 years ago by Reuters. Um, yeah. In Buenos Aires, right, to do uh, to do all the reports uh, as a foreign correspondent, right, a freelance in those days. Okay. And for some reason, I, when I met a, a, a cameraman, became a friend, and uh, he lived in Rio, so he invited me. And the next year, I said, "Hey, I'm coming over. I'm going to check Rio." Okay. I've never been there. Yeah. I've been traveling for two years on the road. Uh, in Asia, Southeast Asia. You're originally from Holland, right? Right. Yeah, I'm Dutch. Yeah. yeah. But ever since 26, and I left home and okay. on my way All right. to discover and expand my horizons. Um, yeah, so I ended up in Brazil, Rio. Uh, from there, I did a lot of documentary uh, documentaries and uh, news reports, offshore projects, you name it. But so, so you've been married to a camera, basically, for quite a few years. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, <laughs> Is that right? I have a point there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the marriage, the camera with me, and, and I with the camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've never been married before. I don't have children. Okay. Because but you've got a camera. Yeah, I That's got a okay. camera. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of documentaries were you making? I know you're doing news, also documentaries. What were you doing? Yeah. Um, I started out of curiosity uh, everywhere I come and meet interesting people. Mm. Um, I, I, I have the privilege to, to, you know, to, to, to dig in somebody's life story. So, from a journalist, I became more like a documentary maker, documentary maker, biographer. So, I do biopics. Um, biopics is like a biographical portrait, a video portrait. I mean, Michael Jackson has one, Steve yes. Jobs has one. All the celebrities, famous politicians, they all have their own biographer gotcha. who write their memoirs or their life stories. But my concept is a kind of different. Uh, when we talk about biopics, uh, biographical portraits, it's, it's for consolation on one hand. Mm. And on the other hand, for pride. But let me explain you. This is, we call it a biopic for life. It's when somebody, while he's still representative and bright, in a good condition, in the prime time of his life, uh, but getting older, of course, yep. and then you come to a moment in life that you start to reflect on memories, mm -hmm. highlights of your life. Mm -hmm. right? And you like to pass it on to your children and their children. And this is how a biopic for life means like, how do I want to be remembered All right. for the next generation? Interesting idea. And, and, and each generation, you, me, each child, each adult, comes with those urgent questions. Yeah. Where do I come from? Exactly. What, what is my origin? Where, to, to whom do I owe my, my DNA, you know, right. my identification? Sure. It's very important. So each person has these sooner or later these questions, where do I come from? Okay, Daniel, I'm going to hold it there because we're going to take a short pause. Okay. And um, I think you've set us up for quite a story. So I'll come back to you in, in just a few minutes, taking a short break, back with a couple of songs, and uh, then we'll continue our story with Daniel. Right, it's Surf Radio with Richard out in the middle of the fields, literally today. We're at the Wildlife Friends Foundation. I've got a, uh, a video journalist with me, Daniel, and he was saying that he's been producing biopics and documentaries about people. But of course, today, we've been having a look around the Wildlife Center. What did you think of all that today? Because we took a, a tour to look at all the animals. How did that grab you? Yeah, it's very impressive to, to see what, what Edwin, the owner, yeah, uh, been you know been doing for the last twenty years. He's been building this place, yeah. isn't he? It's so impressive. So yeah, we saw some elephants. We've seen. seen. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, the gibbons, the monkeys, uh, all kinds of monkeys, by the way. Yeah, cheeky ones. Uh, the tigers, of course. The tigers are spectacular. Yeah, and it's even going to be more spectacular because in a few weeks from now, he's planning this. Um, confiscation project of uh, 15 tigers mm. so they were 15 mm. yeah. yeah and they all 
have been uh, confiscated because they were in private possession. They were smuggled. Yeah. You know? So he takes those animals in his sanctuary, yes. which is where, we, where we are now. Um, and I'm going to follow, as a documentary maker, I'm going to follow that process. Right. How, it, how are they going to you know, uh, tranquilize these animals in order to, to transport? Because 15 tigers, you have no idea what that takes as an operation to, to tranquilize them, to transport them, to put them in quarantine, you know, quarantine. And so, yeah, it's interesting. It's a major project, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm really pleased that you're able to document that on video. Yeah. And uh, hopefully be able to have a look at that at some time. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, I'm going to take another short pause, because that's what we do here at the radio. We keep it short and sweet, and back with some more music in just a moment. As we are here at the Wildlife Friends Foundation, Daniel, the uh, the video journalist is here, so I'm going to call you. Um, so, we looked around this morning, you've been around with your camera, I've been around with mine as right. well. Right. What what caught your attention in particular? Well, there was this moment when Edwin, the, uh, he called for this tiger, uh, which for me a Bengali tiger, but I might yeah. be completely wrong, but this tiger came up to me because he was fascinated about my camera, and, yes. and, and he came up with these curious eyes, and I was really zoomed in, you know, and got him in a close shot. And he kept looking at this camera, so looking at me, because I'm, I'm looking through my viewfinder yes. at this tiger, Yes. and there's only a little few millimeters of uh, fancy between. Yes, you almost gave you a kiss, fancy. actually, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, very close. I kissed him back. Fantastic. There you go. News next.